Hello everyone, it is episode 20 of the Chess.com Rapid Rating Climb series. I hope you've enjoyed the series so far. If this is the first episode you've caught, I would recommend checking the playlist below to see the previous episodes, but again, you're more than welcome just to watch this one. And our opponent is rated kind of low, and I think it's probably because Rapid just isn't that like popular of a playlist. Play is playlist the right word? You get what I mean, like time format. On chess.com normally it's like three plus two two plus one maybe five minute but the the more time you have the less players in the most case hence why we've got quite a big rating disparity here and our opponent plays the scandinavian now i'm gonna take and we're gonna see what he does he might play the modern or he might take and most people here play the automatic knight c3 attacking the queen it's not a bad move. It's probably the best move. Uh, in fact, I'm sure it's the best move. But I like the move knight to f3. And the point is that we're delaying knight c3 because we want to play d4 and c4. And we want c4 to come with tempo on the queen and then develop the knight behind the pawn. That's the idea. Rather than having a knight on c3 and then d4, and then having to like move this knight out the way to move the c-pawn, right? Because we're moving into more of a queen's pawn, a queen's pawn, pawn structure, if you get what I mean. Because the e pawn's gone, right? Normally I go bishop e2 because normally his bishop comes out to g4, but our opponent goes e6, which is a bit weird because maybe he's intending to develop onto this long diagonal with his bishop. But bishop g4 looked very natural. Now we could go d4 straight away. C5. Maybe that's annoying. C4, queen check, and then he takes. So, okay, I kind of like bishop e2 to start. I don't think there's any rush to play d4, c4, especially because he's already played e6. He's unlikely to go e5 to try and stop this move. So let's just castle. It's a very quiet system. And, you know, you just develop the knight to f3, get the bishop out and castle. It's not very aggressive, but I think it's a really good way to play against the Scandinavian. Because this is not what your opponent's used to. It's not a gambit line or anything. It's not even particularly exciting. But it allows for an easy game for the white pieces. So we're going to expand with d4. I just want to check c5, though. If our opponent goes c5, maybe we can take and then try and use like a queenside majority because it'll be 3v2 on the queen side. I don't know if I particularly like it. d4, c5. I could let him take me, though. I could just go like knight c3 takes takes and then we have access to the b5 square which could be useful if we can get a bishop out to f4 so we'll do that because normally in the scandinavian the pawn goes to c6 to stop anything from coming to either b5 or to d5 right so let's develop I am really confused by his early e6 though, because I think this bishop's supposed to come out, but I think it highlights the fact that this system that we're playing, where we don't play knight c3 immediately, and we just develop, you know, somewhat passively, Scandinavian players, there's a good chance they've like literally never seen this approach, which is generally the philosophy I like to take with my openings, is that if I can play something that will catch them off guard, even if it's not objectively that good, then it's probably the way I want to go. And I feel like that's been the meta, even in big tournaments like the Candidates. I've been seeing that constantly, where players will play subpar openings just to catch their opponent off guard, because whilst the computer might give an evaluation of, I don't know, minus 0.1 in this position, yeah, my opponent doesn't know that. And even if he does know that, he has to prove that. My opponent isn't a computer. No one's a computer. Now, people can be a computer if they memorize specific lines against specific openings. 
But if you don't play into those openings they've memorized, then they can't. You understand what I mean? I think it's a very good way to play chess. Knight e5 looks very natural to me right now. If he takes, I take back with a bishop. I'm happy. Um, this also sets up ideas of knight b5, attacking the bishop and attacking c7. Also sets up ideas of bishop to f3, going after the long diagonal. And after knight e5, we're preventing knight to c6. And if the knight comes to d7, maybe we can go to c6, force the queen to e8. Then maybe take? That looks pretty good. So we're going to do this. Also, knight to h5, harassing the bishop is no longer a move because we now control this diagonal. It's a very common idea, like when a bishop trade is offered in the center of the board to throw the knight in the way. It's just a very normal thing that happens. So I have two candidate moves right now. I have bishop f3. And I have knight b5. Far more natural to me is bishop f3. The reason being is that our knight is controlling e4, which is very important. If we play a move like knight to b5, he has full control over the e4 square. We're also not really making a threat because, so what if we take this bishop? He takes back with the pawn, and he's probably good. Probably improves his pawn structure. This, however, looks very good to me because we continue to stop the knight from developing to c6 because we have massive control over this square. It gets a very passive piece into the game, trades off arguably black's most active piece. And now after this, his rook's under attack. His rook is under attack. Knight d7 defends the rook with the queen. But then again, we can maybe go knight to c6, attacking the queen. Queen goes to e8. Maybe takes, takes. Knight here. We can also consider this. Okay, knight a6 is a move, sure. Knight b5. I didn't really consider knight a6 that much because I thought it looked a bit goofy, but maybe it's good. Knight to c6 attacks the queen. Queen moves to d7. And we kind of run out of firepower. We could go queen to b7 attacking the knight, but then just queen c8. Then queen c8. So that doesn't work. Knight b5 looks very tempting to me. What we could do as well is go bishop to g5. Trying to play on this pin. And threaten to ruin his structure. And if he plays a move like h6, then... Ooh, knight c6. Attacks the queen, forces the queen off the defense, and if bishop g5, bishop e7, knight c6 again. And we're going to ruin his structure, and we're going to bring a knight to e4 to put further pressure on the knight. This looks very nice, and his knight's completely out of the game on a6. And if we go here and he takes takes, then he's losing a piece. Well, he can go h6, but... Take, take, take. That's game over. We're up a pawn and his king is in horrible, horrible um, position. So bishop g5 looks very, very good. For all of those reasons. Don't see a reason not to play it. This is a very powerful pin. Worst case scenario... Absolute worst case scenario, I believe we will damage his kingside structure. If he can trade the queens after or during us damaging the structure, maybe it's not so beneficial, right? Because 
even though his king will be exposed, we won't have a queen to exploit it. But I believe that we should have enough firepower and enough tactics working in our favour so that we can ensure he can't trade the queens in like in return for damaging his structure c5 no that's not the move that's not the move mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. what about knight e4 this is under attack this is under attack yeah there's no way here 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 that's game over that's just mate or he gives up a queen. Here, he can't take because he loses a queen. Here, knight... Sorry, bishop e7. Knight c6. At the very, very least, we're winning a pawn. Very least. But if not, we're just mating. Knight e4 looks incredible. Let's do it. We have so much pressure on this piece right now. And bishop e7 simply fails to knight c6. Because we're attacking both of his defenders of the knight. All of our pieces are playing a fantastic role in this attack right now. All three minor pieces and the queen. The rooks aren't involved in the game. But they don't need to be. Because neither are his rooks. And crucially, this knight is not in the game. Previously, when back on this move, back on this move, a big part of the reason why I expected knight d7 was because it keeps the knight in the game. You know, this whole bishop g5 thing wouldn't work after knight d7 because the knight has another guard. He's good. Maybe we can still put pressure on, but probably not because his knights defend each other so nicely. But knight a6 takes the knight completely out of the game. And while he can try and fight back, just knight c6. That should be game over. Now, don't make the mistake of taking, because knight takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, queen takes, queen takes, pawn takes. Yes, you can go knight d7, forking the rook and the pawn. But after rook d8, knight f6 check, king g7, you don't have anything. He's going to win the d4 pawn anyway. So here, and crucially after queen d4, this comes with a check. Could be important, but worth noting. Um, and yeah, his knight is just not playing a role in this game. If he was on d7, it would be a completely different story. So knight c6. Oh, the knight defends d4 anyway. This is over. Absolutely over. Uh, this doesn't work. Let's take. Now here I'm going to take with the knight and not the bishop. Because if we take with the bishop, then pawn takes, knight takes, king g7. Lack is probably losing. But he has more than he should. Because yeah, after queen to um, g4... If he takes, then we win the queen with queen h5. But if he just retreats to h8, then he survives. Although this may force him to give up the queen. But I think far cleaner is to take with the knight. I think that's far cleaner. Because after pawn takes, bishop takes, the queen is under attack. And we're threatening queen g3 or queen g4 mate. And if he doesn't take... And plays king h8, which probably prolongs the game. Then I assume we can just retreat. Or we can play knight takes h7, which defends the bishop, attacks the queen. f6. Yeah, this is game over though. He has to take the bishop with the queen. Otherwise it's mate on the next move. And yeah, that was, um, I think, a very nice showcase of why I recommend this variation of the Scandinavian. Because, yes, it looks kind of quiet. Yes, it looks kind of passive. 
but my opponent doesn't know necessarily how he should be handling the position because it's not a position that anyone plays quite simply anyway let's get into the game analysis and see what the computer has to say okay so this was like literally a perfect game i had 96 percent accuracy like one, I played one inaccuracy all game. The rest of the moves were basically perfect, which is kind of mad. And maybe that just like shows how easy the position is to play for the white side. No doubt my opponent made some mistakes, but you know he's he's seventeen hundred. He's not bad by any means. He's, he's he's a good player. He's probably better than most of you watching this video in all reality. And you know, he could not handle this opening, despite how it may look. So e4, d5, takes, takes. The classic is knight c3. Right, this is how you normally play. And the queen goes to like a5. The computer says plus one. Okay, why? Prove it. Like, it's, it's difficult. And that's why I stopped playing knight c3, because I could not prove it. And... So I adopted this knight to f3 move, which the computer it still likes. And it wants bishop g4, which is like probably the main line. And then you go bishop to e2. So if takes takes, you're simply better. And I think it's far easier to prove that you're better in that position. But normally like knight c6, castle king side, maybe castle queen side. And here I quite like the position. Maybe castling isn't the best. D4. Queen said castle C3. I oh, know C4. Queen A5. Knight C4. No bishop D2. And you have to find like moves like C5. Oh no, that's kind of obvious. But this this, this is like a more typical setup that this variation brings around of the Scandi. And I quite like this because if black goes for quick queenside castle, you just get opposite side castling and these pawns are moving very quickly because the knight isn't on c3 to stop c4, right? That's how I see the position developing personally. So I really like opposite side castling in this sort of scenario. Are you winning? No. No, but I also can't I can't just give you an opening that's going to be winning every single time. Unless your opponent just royally... Eh, like, royally just makes a mistake. Sorry, I, I, I don't know whether I should swear or not. <laughs> um, so, bishop e2. He, he, he goes for e6, right? He goes e6, bishop e2. Is that the best move? Maybe not. Computer wants like d4, c4, or knight c3. But again, this is the setup that I want. Knight f6. Castle. Bishop e7, c4, queen goes back, d4. Here I thought c5 might be a move. but And if I take, I'm only really helping black develop. You could take. Like, it's not bad. But then you get a queen trade, black takes here. You can try and claim you've got an advantage with your queenside majority. And, like, a lead in development. But it's not really what I want. If he goes c5, I was more thinking moves like knight to c3. And if he takes me, then knight takes. And b5 is kind of weak. This diagonal, I don't know, maybe kind of weak, although he can just castle. But moves like bishop f3 look kind of nice. Or bishop to e3 or f4. Again, it's just a very, very easy opening to play for the white pieces. And black is kind of cramped, at least in my opinion. D4, he just castles. And knight c3. Again, if you go c5 here, then bishop f4, we get the same position. So b6 came as a surprise, and it is not a, an amazing move. Computer wants knight e5 straight away. And if bishop b7, bishop f3, we get the same sort of thing, except I haven't played bishop f4 in this variation. So that's interesting. Bishop f4. Again, it wants c5. It wants knight c6. Knight c6 is a weird move to play, though. Because you would expect you just want to develop the bishop. But then we go into the same sort of thing, right? And if the knight comes to c6 here, then 
here and if you take can i take on b7 or i could just do this 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 and this is definitely easier to play with white again black is very cramped you can probably bring a rook to the d file computer wants to go for some kind of attack on the king side which makes sense so bishop d6 was played which was an odd move now if i take then c takes black kind of fixes his pawn structure the c pawn might become weak now the c file is open and i have no play because black now controls the crucial e5 square with a pawn now if he were to take back with the queen it would be nowhere near as good because again knight e5 bishop f3 you get the point the bishop comes to e2 so it can go to f3 at some point in most scenarios right because the reason the scandy isn't all that good at least in one sense is that it gets the queen out early and she's vulnerable to attack which is why c4 comes with a tempo and is good for us because it takes space with a tempo and the fact that there is no pawn on the d file to control the e5 square which is why c5 is a common move to try and undermine d4 because d4 controls e5 right this is positional understanding but our opponent allows us to go knight to e5 if he takes this well we could we could take with the bishop could take with the bishop but apparently taking with the pawn is better after the queen trade knight d7 is the only viable square and i guess bishop f3 c6 is the only way to save the rook this means the knight is tied down to the defense of this pawn we have moves like rook d7 coming doubling up so like say rook d7 bishop b7 rook a d1 rook d8 no you have to give up this pawn apparently but we don't even have to take we can play moves like knight b5 looking at c7 if you take then we take the rook black's very cramped so taking on e5 isn't really viable now if he could jump his knight into um d5 right let's just say this pawn wasn't there and he could block off the file like this which is what often happens when you play knight c3 early in the scandi and this pawn is stuck back on c2 black just dominates the d5 square and always transfers a knight there if this pawn isn't here black's good right black's fine because he blocks off the file his knight is now no longer stuck and his position because this knight is advanced already and blocking off this diagonal he just develops like normal right again if this pawn is back on c2 but it isn't which is the point of my opening and my recommendation and why i recommend it so bishop b7 bishop f3 we want to trade taking is not great apparently queen c8 is better because black needs to try and control this file this diagonal by any means sort of and i guess it keeps the game going it was like rookie one a natural there's no obvious breakthrough for the white pieces here maybe we again go with the plan of bishop to g5 and try and force the knight back but the game goes on the game goes on he takes on f3 which is kind of natural queen takes f3 and again i assumed he was going to go knight bd7 i was going to go knight c6 because i don't really want to trade everything if i take 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 again we go back to a similar position black fixes his pawn structure and black is good so knight c6 was my idea which i explained in the game queen to e8 is the only way to continue the game if queen c8 then takes takes here you win the queen so queen e8 the queen is you know not doing great and here i just assumed the position was better for me and i would figure it out i wasn't sure exactly how apparently this is the way forward which makes a lot of sense because you're threatening knight c7 you're threatening knight d6 this knight is defended by the queen so if a move like rook c8 happens then this is a fork and i really don't see how you defend yourself here knight b8 apparently knight e5 
Oh, because of the discovered attack on the rook. Interesting. Or even knight e7, winning the rook by force and going up an exchange. The position is miserable for black. So that was my idea after knight bd7. And even though it's not great for black, I think it's the most like resilient option. c6 is also a move just blocking off the diagonal, but that means this knight is stuck defending c6 forever. And if the knight can't develop, then the rook can't develop. And that's eight points of material hanging around doing nothing. While I'm going to continue developing and maybe push d5 at some point to break the center open. So while I criticize knight a6, it does make sense. But it allows bishop g5, which is the best move. Now I was considering knight to b5. But after takes takes, I assume knight d7. And black is holding on. I retreat the bishop. c5. You know, I'm still better, but it's not easy to convert this position with white. So, bishop g5 is definitely the best move. And the point is that he can't do anything about this pin. I explained this during the um, live analysis, because I spent quite a lot of time in this position, about two minutes. Because I felt I had an advantage. I felt knight a6 must be wrong, but why? And I believe the reason why is because the knight needed to go to d7 to help with the defense of the knight, quite simply. So we exploit the fact that the knight isn't defended by a knight on d7. We shift the attention to the king side and say, yo, your knight's out of the game. Good luck helping out. Because the rooks aren't really involved right now. It's all minor pieces and queens, because there's not enough open files for the rooks to really play a part in this game at this current stage. c5 just loses. Right. More resilient. It's apparently queen c8. Giving this pawn up. This is suicide though. I mean this is going to be mate. If black doesn't stop me. You have to take this. D takes looks natural to me. Although apparently queen takes. And then maybe knight e4. Knight f6. This is game over. This is game over. So maybe c5 is a good try. But just knight e4. Right. There's many winning moves here, but knight e4 is the most clinical, the most direct way of winning this. Because black can't do anything. Knight e4, bishop e7, only move, because otherwise takes, takes, takes. And we get the same scenario. So the computer's second favorite move is just to give the queen up, which I actually thought he might do. But... This is still just game over because he doesn't even get two pieces for a queen. He gets one piece for a queen. Like, this is pretty damn dead for the black pieces. So, knight e4, bishop e7, knight c6. Again, if our knight couldn't go to c6, let's imagine h3 is on the board. Then he can take. And he's good. He needs that one tempo, but he doesn't have that one tempo. Because we go knight c6. Queen to d7. Takes, takes. Knight takes f6 is best. I did consider taking with the bishop. But after pawn takes, knight takes. King g7 I thought was losing. I think I explained this. Because of queen g4. You can't take because we win the queen. Because the king can't go to e6 or f7 to keep an eye on the queen. It's a good... good um pattern to recognize and if yeah bishop takes pawn takes here he, there is instead of g7 then you know i'm still a lot better but it's not obvious how i'm actually going to mate him here computer wants moves like rook a to d1 and yeah i'm winning but how i'm actually going to prove it again king g7 it's obvious because if he goes here and here, again, he can't take. So if he retreats, then queen h4 defends the knight and threatens mate. And he's got to give the queen up. Or he's got to do this again and give the queen up like this. Yeah? So. Again, it's not completely obvious if he just goes to h8. Because after king h8, um, immediately, the game continues. I want a knockout. So I instead take with the knight. The best move is king h8, which I mentioned during the game, because you can't take here and weaken your dark squares. 
and I can just retreat. I can also just leave the knight hanging. If I play like a3 and takes takes, I win a queen. So there's that as well. Like the favorite move of the computer here is just to play d5 or rook fe1 or knight takes h7, which I did also look at briefly. And after f6, take the rook and you can't take here because you lose a queen. Maybe there was also mate. Oh, this is actually mate. I don't even... Oh, this is Anastasia's mate. I actually had a video recently um, on my channel where I pulled off Anastasia's mate in a game without a queen, might I add. So check that out if you're interested. But anyway, G takes, Bishop takes, it's game over. If he saves the queen, this is mate. Or this is mate. So the only way not to is to give the queen up and then, you know, I've got a queen for a knight. And I bet I bet 99% of you here would convert this. There'd be 1% that somehow stalemate or hang their queen or something. But 99% of you would win this. And so, you know, my opponent's a good player. He knows I'm a good player. He knows this is an easy win. So he resigns. And we are on 1885 ELO, pushing for 2000. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to check, like try out this opening for yourselves, I'd highly recommend it. You don't have to learn too much theory. It's more about understanding the positional concepts, which I think I explained quite a lot in this video. If you have any specific questions about playing this setup, then please feel free to drop a comment below and ask. I respond to every single comment, so I'd be more than happy to discuss. And with that, I hope you have a good day, and I'll catch you in the next video.